Hello everybody, how are you today? In today's video, we're going to do my favorite thing in the world when it comes to Power BI, and it is the sign -up report. So I don't know if you remember the FIFA World Cup report that I created in 2018 for when the men were playing. And uh, I did all the steps, but I skipped the last one, which was how to actually create the report. And uh, you've been asking me, Ruth, would you mind doing, you know, finishing it up and doing the report? And now that is a women's FIFA World Cup, I thought, perfect, let's do it then, right? So the women's FIFA World Cup, it, you know, the data is from the same website, they just changed the URL. So everything is exactly the same uh, as before. So I'm not going to do videos on that. I will just focus on how to create a beautiful report, okay? And the usable one, in, in my opinion, obviously. Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder, so just because I think it's beautiful, it doesn't mean that other people does. Anyhow, this is what we're going to create. In case you miss uh, those videos, there is a playlist, by the way, I will link down below too. So the first uh, page of that report, it was how to, you know, it was uh, to select a group and a team. So you will come into Power BI and you will be able to say, okay, I want to follow Spain. And then you could do that. And then everything else will falter. There was the tab for standings for the matches to see how many wins the teams had, the groups, the, an individual team. You had, we had a, a tab for teams who played where and where the players came from. There was a, Unfortunately, I say obviously, but there was more information about the players when the men played, when the man played. But now when the women played, there's not a lot of information about the girls. So I took anything that was available. And then there is a tab for the matches. So when, when somebody plays, uh, which day, uh, which teams, who plays against who, where, and yeah, anything you would like to know. And finally, there is the knockout phase. So as the games are being played, you can see the classification. Everything, basically. So, yeah, we're going to build this. I'm going to show you how I build this. It is easier than you think. So how about we get started? So to be able to build a Power BI report, a good Power BI report, the first thing you need to think about is, who am I building this for? So depending if you're building a report for management or you're building it for a product team or you're building it maybe for your customers, if you are a, uh, a government agency, maybe you want to you know, show some data to your citizens, depending on who you're showing the data for, your report will change and should change because the needs are different from one group to another. So in this case, for me, for the FIFA report, my audience was without a doubt this group of people, right? They were the fans, the people that wanted to download the report and follow the matches and know everything and anything there is to know about what was going on during the World Cup. So I have them in mind. And I also had myself in mind, if I was going to follow FIFA, what would I like to see? And I was a huge football fan when I was living in Spain. I'm not that anymore. So um, I, I, I could think about it like, okay, how would I like to see it if I was going to follow the FIFA games? So now that you know who your audience is, you have to start thinking about, you put yourself in that situation and say, what, what would I like to see if I want to follow, as we said before? And that is the intent. What is the intent of the report and the intent of each tab? For me, each tab on Power BI has to have an intent, has to have a purpose. Okay, so targeted reports are so much useful than just general reports where you just dump the data and like, hey, here you have it, live with it. Okay, so it is, if you want to create a really, really great report, I really recommend you to think about what are the things you want to incorporate and what are the things you want um, the, your audience to see and to discover. 
let me give an example of how I thought about it when I was creating this. So the first thing I was thinking is, okay, I am going to follow the FIFA. I'm going to, for example, be at work or I will want to check uh, what, what matches are today. And I will, I will, maybe I'm in the bar with my friends and I want to go and check what's going on with other matches if I'm seeing more than one. So I wanted to be able to, to to be mobile friendly. I did not create a mobile report. And the reason for that is because I don't think the mobile reports in Power BI are useful in any way. I mean, the, there is a possibility to do them. I don't think the visuals are good enough. I don't think it, it, it was just not worth the effort of creating it. But I, I wanted to make sure that the report I did it was you were able to click on it with your fingers. Okay, so even if it was not mobile friendly, you would still find like big buttons so you can click on them. So mobile in mind, right? Make sure that it's clear, easy to read, and then you have big buttons so you can go back and forth. That was my thinking. So you could watch it on there. Uh, you could use it on the bar, you could use it on, on the bus, or you can use it at work and see what was going on with the matches. I then thought it's like, okay, I want to follow Spain and Sweden, right? And um, I wanted to either pick a country because, you know, the big hardcore football fans will be able to say, oh, Spain is in group B. But, you know, there are some people that follow, but not that hard, that deep, so they know they want to follow a space. So I wanted to give them the possibility to, in the first page, to be able to pick a country or a group, and that would filter everything in the report, so I didn't have to pick all the time. So if I am going to follow Spain, I want to be able to click on Spain and then filter everything so I know everything that is to know about Spain. Which players, when do they play against who, what are the classifications, how they are doing. And then you have the possibility to control click to another country. For example, for me that I'm following two countries. So I could follow Spain and Sweden at the same time and see everything easier and everything will falter. Okay. So sync filters was a very, very important feature for this specific report. I wanted then to, okay, once I've looked at my favorite countries, I still wanted to know like, okay, how is it going for France? Or how is it going for, you know, the big favorites? So I wanted to be able to reset the filters quickly so I could pick something else. Or go home very quickly so I can, you know, in case I didn't, uh, I wasn't able to, you know, right click or control click or whatever. So I could go back and then easily and then go back again to, so the navigation was super important. Like I want to be able to go from tab to tab super quickly. Okay, so, okay, how is it going for Brazil? Back, back and forth, you know, click, click, and then you have it. So without too much hassle, basically. I want to be able to see the match results fairly easy, but I wanted to see the match results for my teams and my groups, the groups I chose, but also against everybody else. Okay, so just compared to how is it going for Spain, how is it going for Sweden, but how is it going in comparison to whatever else is going to happen in FIFA or what's going to happen in the World Cup. I wanted to see, like, okay, today is Wednesday. Who is playing today? Which matches are on the television, which ones should I see? So I wanted to have a quick calendar and not, you know, again, this has to be mobile friendly. So I didn't want to have like the date picker or that stuff. I picked the custom calendar, I'll show you. So you could just click on it and then you see the matches in there. Oh, where is it going tomorrow? Click there, you see everything, okay? And then you can also click very quickly into a group or a team and then the calendar will show you when they play. So I want to see when Spain plays. So you can click that and then you'll see when Spain, the days, all the days where Spain plays. So you can, I don't know, take off from work or study less that day or whatever it is that you wanted to do. Okay. And then I thought it was like, okay, I don't want this to be just a scheduling thing. I wanted to be able to the users to follow live. So if they refresh the, the Power BI report, 
new data will put in and they will be always up to date. Now, it requires a um, gateway, unfortunately. So even if it's a web connection, you have to have a gateway, but hey, it's better than nothing. If you still, if you click on the refresh, it will refresh. And um, or if you leave your computer on or during the World Cup, it will refresh. Okay, so be able to see it live. I think it was super cool. And then I wasn't planning to do anything about players, but you guys told me like, oh, there, here's a list of players. Can you please add it to the report? And I added them. I did not. I didn't even look at the players list. But again, you you said that oh, it would be fantastic to have it, so I I'll, I'll add it. And now you can see who is playing for which team. So this is the intent of the report. And I think you have to, either you put it in your mind or you write it down. And then you start building the report. And once you have created these, you have, um, you know, once you have created the report, you can go back to the list and say, did I... And I'm sure that when you start building the report, you will get with new ideas. You'll find new ideas like, oh, maybe I should also, hmm. Or, oh, maybe I should also. But you can do that afterwards. I think this is a, a great way to make sure that your report has a purpose, has an intent, and is useful to your users, OK? So. In the next video, we are going to start building this. Okay, so you will see how I build it. You will see the branding. You will see all this stuff. And uh, I'll see you again on the next video where we will start building. I'm not sure if I will make one video for the entire thing. It depends on how long it takes or I will maybe slice it in a few videos. But I'll see you in the next video where I put this thing together or start to put this thing together. Until then. Bye-bye.